Hello people of the internet, today I will show you how to set up Star Wars Edge of the Empire, the fantasy flight games game in Roll20 because it's actually not that easy to set up but if you have the idea how it works it can be really really powerful and it can give you a lot of fun for you to conquer the universe or maybe even hold back the evil empire. Anyway, here we go, we're gonna create a new game and I'm just gonna call that thing, let's say Star Wars Test Game, you can see I already did that a bunch of times to just check it out. And what we want to do here is we want to go down here to select a character sheet template. If you filter it by Star Wars, you see you have a lot of different Star Wars character sheets. But we want the FFG, the Fantasy Flight Games API compatible one. So select that. It should look like this. And then you say, I'm ready. Create the game. Cool. So before we begin, I want to do quickly two things. I first of all invite a player here, so I have a I have a dummy account, and I also need to go to settings and API scripts in order to make the character sheet work. If you don't do that, you will see the character sheet, but it doesn't have any functionality. You can of course, track your stats with that, but the dice roller won't work. All right, what we need to do here is we also go to Star Wars, oh, filter that, Star Wars, and that's also Fantasy Flight Games, and um, you will see we have two of the APIs here, two of the extensions. There's the Destiny Tracker and the Dice Roller, and you want both of them. So select them, scroll down, say Add Script, and there's a bit of scripting going on. And as soon as the, the website has refreshed, you should see this tab here. And that's an indicator that the script has actually um, been added to your game. Let's go for the other one too. We need the Dice Roller, and you can see the Destiny Tracker is not even here anymore. So that's the good news. Saving that. All right, and now we are technically ready to go. One quick side note, by the way, we're gonna go to Star Wars Test. In order to actually add an API script, you have to have a pro account, but not everybody of your, of your group has to have a pro account, only the game master or somebody in your group creating the game and then promoting somebody else to the game master so that they have full access to all of the game master stuff. Um, I'm gonna demote Lenny here for the sake of um, him having a different perspective that I want to show you But um, you can do whatever you want with that um, I'm just saying only the creator needs to have a pro account and then you can already play the game. All right, let's launch the game mm, The first thing that you should see is when you go to characters here that there is already a character uh, Set up for you by the way. We have Lenny in the game as well. This is kind of my dummy dummy player but yeah, we have the dice pool here, which is the, the Game Master pool. This is a very, very powerful tool that you should never, ever give access to your players. Ever. Don't do it. Because otherwise um, they, they will maybe, maybe fudge your dice. Anyway, you can see we have a dice pool here. And um, if we set up like a difficulty like this and uh, also some, uh, some skill die, dice actually, then press the roll button. You can see there's a roll with two green dice. With two yellow dice, we have one black and then three of the difficulty dice. And the result is being shown here in the chat. That's pretty neat, isn't it? But there is more. There is way, way more. And I will show you how to use it to full extent. So we're going to quickly reset this whole GM dice pool. Um, because I want to show you how it is properly used. We're going to add a character for Lenny. And his character is Hunst Olo. Olo, actually. And for the sake of being able to distinguish him from the other guys. We're gonna add an avatar and I'm also adding a token to the battle grid. By the way, big shout out to Token Stamp. If you want to create your own tokens, go to rolladvantage.com slash token stamp. It is a free tool on the internet and you can just drag your image up there. You can select uh, the border tints, you can um, mess around with that. You have different border styles as well. And then you just click download and it's in your download folder on your PC. So I also put the link down below in the description so that you can use it. Anyway, Hans Dolo is here. Good. Um, and the token is also on the battle grid already, which is nice. Um, I'm going to put it into everybody's journals because my group is a band of smugglers that know each other and everybody is able to see each other's profile. However, um, this profile can only be edited by Lenny because he is the player of Hans Olo and we're gonna quickly save that for the moment. All right, so if we go over here to Lenny, you can see that he has uh, Hans Olo in his character sheet now, in his character section. So he can edit Hans um, to his liking and to his, um, to his extent. And you can see there's also a dice pool for Hans, which is nice. So how this works is the following. We can also set up dice here. Let's say he got like three yellow and two blue when the game master calls for an, for example, athletics check. So we set it up here. We set the difficulty in the GM dice pool and 
let's say it's kind of like that. And if the GM now calls for Lenny to make an athletics check for Hunst, Hunst is not going to do anything here because the Game Master has already set this up. He's just going to set up his dice like that and then rolls the dice and you can see the three difficulty dice as well as the two black dice from the Game Master are synchronized with Lenny's pool. That is super cool. But wait, there's way, way more. We're going to quickly do that here, just quickly resetting everything. And as you can see, this guy also has a skill tab down here. As also skill, combat, item inventory, critical injuries and notes and so on. And we will we will take a look at his skills. And here you can see we have his attributes as well as his full skill set. So let me quickly go ahead and do a little bit of uh, character building here. We're gonna set it up to, it's actually pretty overpowered character, but anyway. And I'm gonna give him like uh, two points of proficiency in athletics, all right? So if the Game Master now calls for an athletics check, um, Lenny could say, hey, yeah, I, I got this athletics set up here. So I don't even have to go up here and set up the dice. I will just click that athletics dice roller. And I uh, it's directly coming out of the character sheet here. And the Game Master dice are also coming from the Game Master. But wait, there is even more. Let's say Lenny has a perk on his character that allows him to ignore environmental effects when he is doing an athletics check. So he can go over here and says, minus one black dice, BLK. By the way, the shortcodes for the modifiers are up here in the question mark. And if he presses that now, he should ignore one of the black dice from the Game Master. And this is how it works. He could also say, yeah, I'm also getting two blue dice whenever I'm doing that. And this is just super, super powerful. You can set up all of your skills with all of your perks. And um, yeah, you just click one button when the Game Master asks for it and you are good to go. But there is, again, way more. I will show that to you in a second. Uh, by the way, one thing that I didn't figure out yet, and I think it's not really, um, not really a thing here, it's not really implemented, is upgrades and downgrades. You actually have to upgrade or downgrade your dice manually up here in the dice pool. So if um, I have a proficiency in athletics or a perk in athletic that allows me to upgrade a dice, um, then I have to set it up here. And if I click it down there, then it will be added, like all of this will be added to the dice pool that we have set up here. So one of the green dice should be upgraded to a yellow now. Was that an upgrade? No, it was a downgrade. Oh, sorry. I put a downgrade on this. So one of the yellow dice was downgraded to a green dice. But if I put two, we should have three green dice. Actually, that's not true. One of the green dice got removed. Ah, this is how downgrade works. I'm always getting confused with that. And this is why I like the tool. It actually calculates everything into that. But yeah, this is, this is why it's important to actually reset everything after you have made a check. Because sometimes it's a bit confusing. Because we have multiple, multiple uh, stages of setting up a dice pool in different locations. Okay, I was talking about that there's still more. Let's take a look at, him, um, at Hans Combat's uh, abilities. Let's say he is... A bit proficient with melee, a bit proficient with ranged, and I want to give him some gunnery skills as well. All right? So he has two points of gunnery, two points of ranged light, one point of ranged heavy, and then a bit of melee. Let's say um, we are getting into a bar fight. What happens then is we go to the combat tab and we quickly set up Hunt's weapons. Let's say he has um, a custom holdout blaster. Blaster. That thing deals like four damage, has a crit rating of two, and the range is, let's say, medium. The skill for that is ranged light, and the weapon type is blaster, whatever. It also has a quality, which is Pierce, Pierce, two. All right. That comes from from the um, from the core rulebook, of course. And we're gonna add another weapon that is a, let's say, vibro knife. I don't know what the vibro knife does right now. But I will assume that the damage that is based on his brawn is plus one. This is not connected, by the way. So I have to actually go back to his brawn value, which is three. Then I have to calculate the plus one from the weapon. So I'm going to give it four. Critical rating is also two here. This is engaged. It uses the skill melee. And um, that's fine for me for the moment. So let's say the Game Master calls for... Um, the Game Master calls for a test for a ranged attack. Then... Hunst would say, yeah, I'm going to use my custom hold or blaster to blast a bounty hunter in the face. And then he rolls that dice. 
And you can see the custom holder blaster from Hans Olo is being used and you can already see the damage, the critical value as well as the additional qualities and um, it'll also use this ranged light ability which is two yellow dice and two green dice. So it makes it rather easy to, um, to just post that into the chat so that everybody can see the outcome and the game master can then tell you what was happening. In order to make the Game Master tell you what was happening even better, there's one thing that I quickly want to mention. You can go over here to the, to the dice pool on the Game Master, go to settings, and then use the skill suggestions. Let's say we're going to add combat and general suggestions and say display in skill. Um, then you will see that if Hans says, um, okay, I'm going to make an athletics check again. Let's go over here real quick. They are um, successes. That means uh, reduce the time required, we can uh, increase the distance traveled. This is kind of a suggestion what to do with these successes. We also rolled an advantage, um, there's a suggestion for that, and there's also a triumph, there's also a suggestion. And this is based on the skill that we use. So there are lots of different suggestions for every skill. Uh, for example, here on a climbing or an athletics check, um, the advantage would suggest generate bonus on other physical checks performed later or by allies that turn. So we could use that. We can also make it so that only the game master is gonna see that, so that he decides what to do with those roles. Um, and that is um, a whisper then. So if we do it again, you can see there's the regular dice roll and all of these, wow, it's a lot of, what the hell? A <laughs> uh, lot of advantages here. And you can see the advantages could either be like one advantage to do that or spend two advantage to grant additional maneuver during the turn or so on. So again, this is a really powerful tool, but this is only whispered to the GM at that point. All right, one more thing that I wanna, I wanna tell you here is um, the character sheet autonomy in general, because we have, um, we have created Hunst now, Hunst Olo, and he is obviously a player character, so he will use the character sheet. There's also something like a vehicle sheet, there's also something like a group sheet where you can uh, t keep track of your, your group's hideout and so on. Um, there's a companion sheet, so if you have a droid following you, you can already, um, already set that up as well. And there's an NPC sheet. However, this here is better off if you set it up for every single character, because this is just a workaround, um, because the developers wanted to have different kind of sheets, but they couldn't, they couldn't create different kind of um, different characters and vehicles and all of that here. So they had to work around that by just adding a lot of tabs into the, um, into the whole character sheet. What I would do as a game master now, if I set up like um, a vehicle, let's say our band of smugglers, they have a YT freighter, uh, that is called Spitfire. Then I would set it up here. I also give it a little bit of a, an image here. This thing can be seen by everybody. This can be edited by everybody. So it will show up in everybody's character sheet. And as soon as this is ready, we're going to save the changes here. Here's our Spitfire. And we just use the vehicle sheet on this one here so that everybody in the crew has access to the values of the, of the vehicle and they can see it and they can adjust it. So if you want to make it visible to everybody, then just use that and then set it up like this because when you open it again, it will automatically open at the vehicle sheet and it's fine. It all also has a dice pool here. It also has everything else that you would, um, that you would expect. And it also has weapons and crew roles and so on. So you can do something like that. So if you have an engineer that is called, um, let's say, Ujani, um, his role is engineer, you can type whatever you want in there. Um, we could say, yeah, we're gonna use his uh, mechanic skill. If there was a character that is uh, specifically called Ujani, and this is the one, the name that is in the character sheet here, then I could say, hey, he's gonna make that, he's gonna make that role now, but since he cannot find the character, that's not gonna be a thing. However, let's say, let's say Hanst is our pilot. Han oh, Hanst Olo. I wish there was a drop down, you can select the characters there. I already played, man, Olo. Uh, he's the pilot. Then he can use his astrogation check here, and if you click that now, you can see Hunst can use that basic based on the on the Spitfire's profile. You can also add weapons to the vehicles. For example, uh, Hunst Olo is gonna use, let's say, a medium laser battery um, that has like a like an angle on every side. It has a crit rating of two, a damage rating of like five. Uh, it has close range and uses the gunnery skill, obviously. Then. 
you would see this is coming from the vehicle now and um, it uses Hunt's gunnery skill. So it's only, it's a bit of setup early on, but as soon as you have that, you just have the roll at your fingertip. All right, let's go over and actually create an NPC because there's a big thing that I want to show you here as well. So we are in the Dungeon Master screen. We're going to add another character that is going to be an NPC. And let's say we're going to, we're going to make a bounty hunter here. Bounty hunter. That is not visible to anybody, that cannot be edited by anybody, and that also has a token on the battle grid. So setting up the tokens is actually, it's actually quite cool. And it's actually a super powerful thing to have. Alright, so we got uh, Edit. Edit is our bounty hunter. And of course we're going to use the NPC sheet, which is a bit of a smaller sheet than the character sheet. And that's for the game master to just keep track of everything. So if you go here to NPC, you can see... Um, the skill tree is way smaller because usually NPCs don't need that intricate uh, athletics, acrobatics, whatever. You just tell the people um, what the NPCs are doing. But we have some we have some attributes as well. Let's say we have some agility, a bit of intellect, three cunning, two willpower, two presence here. And we also have something like, like melee, ranged light, ranged heavy, and, and brawl. And you can also set up talents and you should also be able to set up weapons like that like I showed you before but anyway what I wanted to show you is that this guy has like let's say 21 wound thresholds you already got like let's say seven of it and he has a strain threshold of 12 and got, got that okay now that we have this character we can actually set up let's say a fighting scene shall we do that I'm gonna go over here close that real quick go to the background because I also want to I want to make it pretty let's upload um, an image of a cantina because there's gonna be some conflict between Hans Olo and Lani Ijubud. <laughs> nice name there. I think it's quite appropriate for this guy. And what I want to hear, what I want to do here is real quick, drag that to maximum. Okay, I'm fine with that. And quick tip, by the way, you can over go over here to page toolbar. You can select page settings and then count the amount of squares that you have left. This is uh, six in this case, and just decrease the width by the amount of squares so you have it nice and even and uh, there are no no additional squares that bother you all right so we go back to our token layer and we're gonna appropriately size the tokens so here's our bounty hunter here's Hans, and let's say that they have a bit of an argument and what i want to do now is i want to set up Hans so that the player can actually move the token around and all of that so we're gonna go over here go to the little cork icon down there and say this is not a generic token this is actually representing Hans Olo boom and now if we go over here to our player he sees the characters and he also can move around his token because this is the player of Hans I can not access the other token because this is one of the NPCs and I couldn't also access any of the other player tokens if they were assigned to the specific player it makes sense right what we also have now is we have established a link to the character sheet which means uh, we could use these little icons here to represent some of the values of that character sheet. Which means if I go down here and say, let's say, the bar number 3, I want it to represent, because it's red, the wounds that he has. I go over here and say, wounds. Alright? And now it's, take, it's taking the value. It should take the value of the wounds of Hans. Did I not do it? This is Hans Olo. Give me a second. Hans, what's going on there? Let me take a look. Oh, wait, okay. Yeah, we didn't set the wounds for him. So he has a threshold of, let's say, 20. He has five wounds already. His strain is uh, 16. He has like seven. Okay. Of course, we have to set that up. And now you can see the red bubble here represents his current wounds. And I want to zoom in real quick. Okay. Let me do it like that. And there's also a little, little red bar that shows his wound threshold. Hans sees that as well. See? Okay, so this is Lenny's perspective of this, and he can he can see the wounds of his character. If the game master tells you now, hey, the bounty hunter shoots you in the face for five damage, the player could say, okay, I'm gonna take five more wounds, I'm gonna go into this bubble, and instead of typing in ten, I mean, you can do that now, you could also just go back to the five here and say plus five, and it'll automatically add or subtract the wounds that you have here. Of course, you can do the same thing for, let's say, your strain. I'm going to take the blue bar because I think blue is good for strain for a reason. You type in strain and you can see there are so many... Wait a sec. There's so many um, variables added to this bar here. They're all coming out of this character sheet. Um, let me quickly add the strain here. 
And now we have another bar above his head where you can see the strain. And since everybody can see this character, um, like his party members can also see, hey, my friend is actually quite beat up. I uh, should really help him now. It's really cool to keep track of the wounds and the strain in combat. I like it. Okay, so what if the Game Master also wanted to... Um, wanted to give the people a little bit of a hint on how damaged and wounded the NPCs are. Now, of course, they can do the same, but I want to show you something that is even better. So we have our, our bounty hunter character here, and we need to make this guy represent the bounty hunter, obviously. And now we also have these three bars, and we can say uh, wounds here, but if I type that in, nothing will happen, because this character sheet... It is set to NPC, so it'll only take the values from the NPC sheet that we have uh, typed in here. Which means you have to actually not use wounds, but NPC wounds, right? So we go all the way down here. This is all from the, from the NPC tab. All the values from there. And I have already scrolled past it. Here are the wounds. All right. So now you can see the wounds here. The problem is that this is an NPC and I didn't give anybody permission to see this character. Which means that our uh, Lenny, our player character, cannot see the values of that. However, if you just want to show the values of the bar, you go over here again, you go to the advanced tab, and you take bar number three, this is the one that we have set up, and we're gonna give permission to everybody to see the bar. But only the editors can see the text, which is, I think, really cool. But now the players can see... This bounty hunter already got some scratches, he already got some wounds, but we have no idea how many hit points he has, and we all only can estimate, um, based on our, on our former experience and how we damaged him, how much he can still take. And this is actually a pretty cool thing to do. I really like it. Uh, you can also set up the strain like that, like I just showed you, and then have a nice fight in the cantina, and um, yeah, make your players happy by giving them some more information. Um, okay, let's talk about initiative real quick, right? We have an initiative tracker here as well, so if we open that, you can see there's a turn order, but nothing is in there. What you want to do in order to set up initiative, obviously, as a game master, you call for it, and then you go over here to your character, to Lani Ijebird, and there is initiative. You can see he has uh, two values here for cool and vigilance. Cool you use if you're prepared to roll initiative and vigilance, obviously, if uh, it's unexpected, if you are surprised. Let's say the bar fight has escalated and everybody is kind of drawing their weapons already, so we're gonna make a cool check here. What you do is you roll for an NPC, since this is an NPC, and you can see we got... Uh, wait a sec. We got um, one success and three advantages, not bad. And then you ask for the players to also roll their initiative, so we go over here to Hans. He's gonna use his character initiative, obviously. This is in the combat tab, and he has a cool of three. So, you can see he generated quite good success, actually. He generated um, a PC slot. And keep in mind, guys, um, this is not based on the characters. The way it works in Edge of the Empire is that all of the, like, both of the parties generate slots for their characters, and then the parties can decide which character is gonna act on which slot. So, the, NP uh, the PCs will act before the NPCs, and as you can see, since the turn order tab is open on the Game Master screen, it automatically opens on the player screen as well, and they can see who's gonna act next, and they can plan their moves accordingly. And when somebody has acted already, the, the Game Master can click that next button, and uh, just scroll through the initiative order like that. One more thing that I quickly want to mention is, and it's kind of actually important, is that everything that you have set up here with your characters on the battle grid, in the tokens, you actually want to save so that you can reuse those tokens on another scene. So, for example, if I created a new scene here and I dropped Hans from the character sheet over here, you will see that there is nothing. It's just his character portrait here because I didn't really set up a token yet. Right? In order to make that happen, I have to go back to my previous scene and I have to click that token, select it, go to Hans and then go to Edit and say the selected token that I have here is gonna be his default token with all the settings that I made, with all the connections that I made from the wounds to his character sheet and so on. So you select a token makes this token here that represents uh, this guy his standard token. So if I save the changes, if I go over here to another scene that might be like a, like the streets in front of the bar, then you can see Hans is gonna come with the same setup as I was giving him earlier. Also, you also have to do that for your NPCs. 
Otherwise, um, it also doesn't work. So let's go to Lani. Let's go ahead and uh, edit that here as well. Use the selected token as a standard token and save the changes. So if he's getting away and is coming back later, then uh, wait a sec, we go over here. Um, if he's coming back, then you can also drag him from the characters menu and um, Yep, you have all of his values that are attached to um, that are attached to the character uh, sheet uh, already on the token as well. Keep in mind, guys, when you're making um, changes on this specific token here. For example, you say this is this is none. Why is this none? All right, interesting. Should be wounds. Should be wounds. Okay, let's go over here and let's edit that to. I want to represent strain twice. One on the one the red bar. One on the blue bar. It doesn't make sense, I know. And then you drop Hans in here again. You can see this is still set up to his wounds. So every time you make a change on the battle grip, it doesn't change automatically in the character sheet um, when you when you are just edit the tokens, right? So if you want this to be persistent, I also have to go in here again. I have to edit this. I have to remove the old token, and I have to say I'm gonna take the double strain token as the standard token now for him. So keep that in mind when setting up. But usually you set it up once and you don't change it afterwards anymore anyway. But anyway, guys, that has been it for today. I hope you got some value out of this video. If you did, then don't forget to leave a rating. You can subscribe to the channel if you want more of that. I might wanna do some more tutorials for setting up Roll20 because I'm doing it a lot right now in the times of Corona. And if you wanna uh, give something back, there's also a link down below in the description to my. Patreon page and I hope to see you guys next time. Happy playing!